G'day, I'm Greg and welcome to Rev Shed Performance. Today we're going to get a basic setup on the poor man's flow bench. Now, what we have here is we have the manometer reading in inches of water, and what we have here is we have the anemometer. And what I have done is You've got to set these up to the area of the duct that you are using. Now, that's great, but we're running really confined numbers here. And so it doesn't work exactly. What I've done is I've gone to Stan Weiss's website and I've looked up the flow numbers for a stand of one of these heads. And at 600th hour, the intake should flow 191 CFM or thereabouts and the exhaust 172. Now, the reason that we are flying at 600 is at 600, the flow is dictated solely by the port. Under 0.25D being 0.25 of the valve diameter, the valve and the seat heavily influence what's going on. Once we get over that, then the um, port, or the port is what it's all about, or probably a better way of putting it is the valve becomes pretty much irrelevant to the, the high level flows. So what I've done here is, I was mucking around last night, we set 0.036 on the exhaust, so we'll start with that on the intake, um, 0.036. Enter. 600 and so what we'll do is we'll do a quick baseline <laughs> turn the compressor off we'll be back in a sec so what do we know the first thing we know is that we're not even close because what we know is that the head only flows 199 cfm so we shouldn't be flying we're showing 255 which means that is ridiculous so what we're going to do is we will go we'll hold this down till it goes to area and 036, so what we'll do is we'll go down to, um, let's go down to 025. O25. 025. And we'll do another test. Uh, 036. We'll call it 025. Again, I'm not going to worry about doing any mass conversions at the moment because what we know is that it is so far away that uh, it's going to give us ridiculous numbers. So we shall go to area again. Uh, we'll go to 0.15. All right, let's do a test on 0.15. <laughs> Call that 109 
at 7.10. Now, don't be concerned that the pressure pressures are changing. As your in, incoming voltage changes, as the motor heats up, as the bearings start to seize, as the speed falls off, um, you're going to get variations in test pressure. So don't panic about seeing a variation in test pressure. Just write it down and take it. Now, what we're going to do is we're at 104, 7.1. We're now going to do a conversion. That'll be right. System telling us we've got a software update available. Typical. We're now going to convert the 7.1 uh, the 109 CFM at 7.1 to 28 inches of water flow, which is what we've got on Sam Weiss's website. So 28 divided by 7.1 equals square root of the answer. Enter. So now we have 109 times answer so we're showing 216.5 cfm let's adjust it again we hold this down it'll pop up with the area in a second this is on mine you need to read your own instructions on yours we'll go down point one and we will do another test CFM at 7 inches. Zero point. Uh, I forget what I actually put that up. I need to come back and have a look and see what I've got there. 0 0.14. 0 0.014. 0 0.015. That's where you make a mistake if you don't record it. Okay. So, we shall go back and see how close we are. Now, don't expect it to be exactly correct because different cylinder heads. So we've got 28 divided by 7. Oh, that's going to be poor. How difficult is that? Enter. Square root of answer. 2. Again, very difficult. So we had 100 multiplied by answer. So we've got 200 CFM. So we got uh, previous answer. We had 216. So what we will do is we'll go another point one and see where we end up. Point one, point oh oh one. You know what I mean. Area. Pops up 014, go to 013, enter 013, test pressure, you notice my excellent... <laughs> to do too much maths at that to know that uh, oh, where am I? 94 or 7 should be um, 2 times 94 should be 188 so let's do it again 
We'll go through the whole exercise again just so that you can see it. So we have 28 divided by 7 equals 4. Square root of your previous answer is 2. What did I write down? 94. 94 times answer 188. Now we were aiming for 191, or when I say we were aiming for 191, we know that the te that on Stan Weiss's head, head web Stan Weiss's website, this intake port was tested on a head at 191 CFM. 188, 3 CFM. Mate. It's th you're within 3 CFM. Corrected on a bench that owes you what? It's a cheap bench that's producing meaningful numbers. So we can now go we can drop this back to 500. Five hundred. We're still in the port flow curve, although the intake valve will possibly be starting to affect it because it's coming up closer to the valve seat. It shouldn't be, but on the Cleveland, because of the size of the port, oh, sorry, because of the size of the intake valve, you're, I think it's a 0.25D is about four hundred and thirty thou by memory. So we could be seeing some influence. <laughs> Seven. So we'll call that 92 CFM at 7 inches. Now, oh, we'll just flip back through here. Uh, at 500, 180 stands website said 187. So we're looking for 187. Uh, we know that we want 2 times 92, so that's 180, 184 is our correct number. We're at 188. So 184 um, on 187, so we're minus 3. 188 from 191, we're minus 3. <laughs> How... Add 3 CFM if you want, or just leave it where it is. What I know now is I can go and port a cylinder head and get meaningful comparison numbers after I ported it. And, more to the point, I, I'm not going saying I'm going up by a percentage, I'm going up by that. So, went on a VA, on the cylinder head, the we'll go through some books later on in the few more... Um, a few, a few videos time but what happens is you are you the 2.06 is your number for cfm so if this intake port was flying 200 cfm we multiply that by 2.06 so that would be 412 cfm uh is that right so yeah it'd be 400 and something cfm that is the theoretical horsepower limit of the of this head based on intake airflow. It's a well-documented fact. It's based on 28 inches of airflow. There is issues with testing it at 10 inches of airflow, or in this case, we're seven. There's a few issues about that, but we'll talk about that later. But at the moment, you have a flow bench that will do a meaningful reading. We'll stop the video here, and then we'll come back and we will do the intake side. Uh, sorry, we'll do the exhaust. We'll change, change the setup. 
We'll do these awesome. We'll come back and we'll show you how that's done.